my standing by a row of cows in Gloucestershire? Well, back in the 1700s, these animals gave one local man the answer of how to protect generations of people against one of the most horrific diseases ever, smallpox. In 18th century England, smallpox was one of the biggest killers. This incurable disease wiped out large numbers of the world's population. It started with flu-like symptoms, followed by a rash, developing into blisters that covered and disfigured the whole body. There was no effective treatment once infection had taken hold, and the result was deafness, blindness, and almost certain death. But it was here at this house in Berkeley that Edward Jenner a humble country doctor, was to discover a breakthrough that could purge the world of this killer disease and change medical history for good. All he needed was the world to listen. To understand why Jenner took on this killer disease, we need to go back to when he was a child. The way to protect against smallpox back then was to infect the young with the smallpox virus and hope they developed immunity if they survived. I caught up with Sarah Parker, the curator of the Jenner Museum, to find out more about this strange practice called variolation. What happened to Jenner and the other children when he was aged eight? Well, Jenner was orphaned, sadly, at the age of five, and he was sent to boarding school locally in Witten under Edge. And at the age of eight, he and his other fellow pupils were essentially locked in a barn and purged, bled and starved in preparation for this uh, medical procedure called variolation. How long was this for? How long was you it was for around about two weeks. It was a really horrible procedure, but not everybody could afford this technique. So mm. actual, in actual fact, he was one of the lucky ones, believe it or not. Although psychologically, that's quite damaging for an eight-year-old, isn't it? Really? Terrifying. You know, he didn't have his parents. He was away from home. And he was, you know, systematically given this live smallpox from somebody that got it in the village yeah. and then left to see whether it developed. And even if they had survived, they could have been blinded, they could have been deaf, um, had problems with their joints, such as arthritis. So it really was not just a disfiguring disease, but potentially fatal, but generally horrific. Mm. But he was one of the lucky ones. He was, believe it or not. He did develop smallpox, which was the intention, but he didn't get it very badly. But he was determined throughout his life to come up with a better procedure so that other children wouldn't have to go through this terrible experience. After completing his training to be a physician in London, Edward Jenner returned to this house. And it was here that he started the bulk of his research into smallpox. It was in this study, after years of research, Jenner finally thought he'd found the answer. And it lay right on his rural doorstep. He had observed that many of the local milkmaids often developed a non-life-threatening disease called cowpox. And he believed there might be some truth in the folklore that cowpox provides some immunity to smallpox. On the 14th of May, 1796, Jenner put his theory to the ultimate test. He infected eight-year-old James Phipps with cowpox and then gave him a dose of smallpox. The result was it produced no effect. Phipps was successfully inoculated. Jenner knew he was onto something. Jenner followed up this experiment with many others, which confirmed his theory that cowpox did indeed protect against smallpox. This was the beginning of vaccination. So we've got a vaccination against the disease. Why didn't people start to use it? Well, it's like most things. People were resistant to change as they are today. And Edward Jenner strived for 25 years before he actually came up with his theory and his vaccination experiment. But variolation, which was the established medical procedure at the time in, in this country, was a very lucrative and also very established procedure. And the medical establishment, the medical elite particularly, were definitely not willing to change. And um, they weren't particularly receptive to Jenner and his ideas. He must have been so frustrated. He was extremely frustrated, yes, because he was a man who just 
was trying to make um, a better medical procedure for everybody. He wasn't trying to make money out of it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, trying to get his ideas across against a huge backlash of opinion. Mm -hmm. Many people thought that if you were to give somebody an animal-derived substance, like cowpox, you would grow horns and udders and mm. other cow-like <laughs> features, which is, sounds ridiculous today. Yeah. Um, other people thought that, well, maybe you'd just die of another disease. Yeah. Uh, there'd be a population explosion and mass starvation. And the church weren't particularly um, happy for it to sounds happen. Sounds like everybody was against it. So how did he make that break? He obviously needed somebody to champion. Yes. That's right, yes. Um, luckily, he also had a house in Cheltenham, which mm. there was, it was a spa town, it was the, you know, the 18th century. And because lots he, of the elite were there. Exactly. And because he was a doctor, he met lots of very influential people who yeah. became his friends, not least the um, fifth Earl of Berkeley at Berkeley Castle. And it, if it wasn't for his friends, the aristocratic lords and ladies of the day, he perhaps would uh, never have got his idea mm. off the ground. They really championed him. Strong support was all Jenner needed for his reputation to be sealed worldwide. He had succeeded against all the opposition, and in 1853, vaccination with the cowpox virus was made compulsory in this country. While Jenner's groundbreaking discovery saved millions of lives, the disease ravaged the poorer communities throughout the world, with 50 million new cases each year. It wasn't until 1967 that the World Health Organization instigated a mass vaccination program and in 1980 this disease was finally declared dead. It still remains the only disease to be eradicated from the world in its entirety, thanks largely to the pioneering work of Edward Jenner. Despite Jenner's newfound fame, he remained working here as a country doctor in Berkeley, and he used this small summer house at the bottom of his back garden to give free vaccinations to the poor. It was his way of giving something back to the community that inspired him. <laughs> 